what's up my name is Technova here for troubleshoot and welcome back to another quick video this video was in no means quick to create however in this video i'll be showing you how you can compile ffmpeg for yourself to get access to things that you don't usually have like fdk aac and codecs like that if you're trying to convert an audio file to another audio file save a whole bunch of space and have it sounding just as good you might be interested in using something like fdk aac above the default aac encoder for ffmpeg However, upon Googling it, you'll find guides just like this. You'll head across to ffmpeg.org, read about the command that you need to run, and then you type it in yourself. So I've got ffmpeg in this folder over here, as well as a test wave file. If we go ahead and follow the instructions pretty much verbatim, ffmpeg i test wave, as such, literally copying and pasting from the page, you may see something like this, unknown encoder lib fdk aac. So how exactly do we go ahead and fix that? and add these missing codecs. Well, unfortunately, it's not something that you can download plugins for. You need to recompile it from scratch. The reason that even though this is a quote unquote full build, you're still missing codecs is because certain codec licenses stop you from redistributing software that includes them, which means that it's incompatible with FFmpeg's license and hence not included in builds that you can download off of the internet. To get access to FDK AAC, as well as other codecs that you're missing, you need to build it yourself. And of course, this can be very difficult, especially if you're on Windows. But in this video, I'll be highlighting a project that makes this more than incredibly easy. It just takes a couple of minutes to set up and then you can leave it running for hours while it builds FFmpeg. And when it's done, you're able to even easily update it, which is awesome. So in the description down below, you'll find a link to the Media Auto Build Suite, 993 stars, 177 forks, etc. This project over here has been going for quite some time and has had a ton of work done on it. Basically, it makes it incredibly simple to build FFmpeg to your exact needs and standards. You can choose whatever codecs you want to include, exclude, and it's got a nice handy little guide that you can follow along with, which I'll be doing in this video. Do note that if you're going to be enabling CUDA, you need the CUDA SDK installed, for which you can find steps over here. And of course, if you're having any issues, here's some troubleshooting steps also located on the GitHub page. These are the simple instructions here that we'll be following along with in this video. So scrolling up to the very top, all we need to do is click here to download the latest version. This downloads a zip of the current page, which is the same as clicking code and download zip. Then we'll open up the zip file that we just downloaded. And I'd recommend putting this on a drive with quite a bit of speed as it'll be going in and out of a lot of files, creating a lot of files, etc. Eventually when it finishes building, does take up some space, which you'll see here. This is a previous build of FFmpeg that's currently calculating, and it's taking up 14 gigabytes, including source, builds, etc. So of course I did build it with quite a bit extra, including even MPV, the video player. So with that aside, I'll be placing it on my desktop. It's part of an MVME SSD, so it's really fast and good to work with. As you can see here under requirements, it requires Windows 64-bit, an NTFS drive, a 13 plus gigabytes of disk space, four gigabytes plus of RAM, and at least PowerShell 5. You can check what PowerShell version you have by opening up PowerShell and entering dollar sign PS version table and hitting enter. Then you'll see the version right here. Awesome, so everything's up to date. On top of this, if I search for require, you'll see that some codecs have different requirements here, such as requiring the Java JDK, JRE, etc., etc. So I didn't really run into issues with that. So to begin, all you need to do after extracting it is run the media auto build suite.bad file. It's incredibly simple. Or info, run anyway. Then you'll see a window that looks something like this. If you see this, the total file part seems to be too large, larger than 32 characters, you'll need to move it somewhere else. And of course, they do recommend not including spaces in the file path. So I'll simply create a new folder called, say, ffmpeg, paste the files in here, and I'll cut this and put it right on my C drive over here. This is where we'll be working from. So once again, running media auto build suite, now inside of C, FFmpeg, you'll see the window looks a bit different this time. Awesome. So what are we building? I'm building 64-bit. I'll hit three and hit enter. You'll need to get used to reading through these prompts and answering them as you see fit. What are you building? I'm building the non-free version, which means that it's unredistributable, but can include anything. This is exactly where libfdk and a couple of other things are. As you see, number two disables FDK AAC, OpenSSL, etc. 
Anyways, so I'm entering one for non-free, which means I'm unable to distribute the binaries after creating them. We now get dropped right into the options. So you're going to see an absolute ton of these options that look something like this. You'll be answering yes, no, or through a couple of different other options. I'm not entirely too sure of the settings that I had, but you basically just need to look out for the codex that you want here and make sure you click yes for those options. But before you get into picking individual codecs, you'll have a couple of main options here, such as build standalone libraries. If you say yes, you'll end up with a folder that looks something like this, a bunch of different codec.exes. I prefer this as it gives me more granular control, but you'll end up with a ton more files. So do keep that in mind. I'll be saying yes for this. So one, enter. Do I want to build VP9? Sure, one. AOM, sure, one. Sure, one. One, one one, etc. But of course, you can choose no for any of these if you don't want them. The more that you select no to, the smaller the output binary size and number of files will be. Eventually, you'll see options like this, so don't get used to spamming one or two too quickly. Build x264, h26 encoder, and we get to choose from a bunch of options. Number one, lib binary with 8 and 10 bit, two, no, three, only 10 bit, 4, 8, and 10-bit with libav format and ffms2. 5 is a shared binary of 8 and 10. 6 is the same as 4, so 8 and 10-bit libav format and ffms2 with video codecs only, can reduce 3 megabytes. And 7, lib binary with only 8-bit. For this, I think I chose 4 as it included the most, even though I'm probably not going to use most of these things. Now, of course, instead of reading everything verbatim, I'm really going to leave this section up to you and just quickly drill through these with plus minus the same options that I had for my previous build, which took a couple of hours. So one, one, one. And you may see things like this with little notes to make sure you read what's on screen before once again drilling in numbers. Do you want to build it? If you do, you may have issues with other things, etc. This one just may have issues with itself. So I'll leave this as say no. But let's say that that's a mistake and I'd like to make this one later. I'll quickly make a note of what codec this is so we can return to it later on and I can show you how to re-enable things if you've disabled them here by accident. Do I want to build FDK AAC? Absolutely, yes. That's exactly why I'm starting this. Now, I quickly said yes to this media info option over here as I was quickly spamming through them, but this did cause me issues the previous time that I built and I had to go ahead and fix this. But again, I'll explain that in just a moment. So, so far I've made a note of XVC and media info. I'll continue drilling through these. I'll leave build FFmpeg binaries and libraries set to one, static, which is recommended. Always build FFmpeg when libraries have been updated. Yes, once again, choose FFmpeg and MPV optional libraries. I'll choose yes, but you can choose other options here in order to debloat. Avoid the last two unless you want really useless libraries you'll never use. Just because you can include a bad codec that no one uses doesn't mean that you should. If you select yes, we will create files with the default options. We use them with FFmpeg and MPV. You can remove any that you don't need or prefix them with hash. We'll get there in just a second as well. And finally, we get to the last section here. Upon clicking any key, it will start building, but don't do that quite just yet. Choose FFmpeg and MPV optional libraries in these files here. Build FFmpeg options.txt. So, opening up the folder, build, and finally, ffmpeg options.txt, we see a bunch of these arguments here, which you may have heard of. You'll usually look out for something like hyphen hyphen enable FDK AAC or libfdk, whatever it is, something along those lines. If you see a hash before something, it has been disabled. And if you like to disable something yourself, simply enter a hash before it and save the file. But of course, I'll mainly be leaving this as is and closing out of it. When you hit enter, you'll then be prompted about mpvoptions.txt, which is in the same folder here. Once again, a whole bunch of options here for compiling with mpv. However, the next time that you hit enter, the build should immediately start. So at this point, you don't want to hint enter quite just yet. If you open media auto build suite.ini, you'll see a bunch of options here. These are the options that we previously defined. As I have noted here, I'm looking for XVC and media info. So quickly scrolling through these, here's XVC, which I enable. If I didn't want to enable it, and I know the other options, I can enter another option here. 
However, if I don't quite know what I'm enabling or disabling, you can get rid of the option entirely and see the prompt again when we run the program in just a second. Same thing goes for media info. The build failed when I had this enabled, so I had to run it again in the morning and it started from where it left off. I'll remove both of these, save the file and close out of this command prompt window here, back, run auto build once again, and it'll continue where we left off. Do I want to build XVC? This time I'll say no. Then media info, no. Awesome, so I'll go back to yes. Do I want to build MP4 box? Sure, sure. And something like this is not recommended. So I'll simply click no. Do I want to build MPV, which is the video player? I'll say sure. VLC, no thanks, as it takes a long time apparently. But of course, you really don't need to enable any of these here, as these are all optional. Do I want to build curl? Sure, no thanks for that. No, sure, no, no, no etc. I'll say yes for that, no for that, which is recommended. And finally, the number of threads. It is not recommended to use all cores slash thread. I have 12 cores, 24 threads, so it's recommending me 12. I can enter 12 here and hit enter. Delete version source folders. I'll say yes. Strip compiled files and binaries. Yes. Hack compiled files. No, as it could cause antivirus issues. Write logs. Sure. Create a script to update. Absolutely one, which is yes. Show timestamps, I'll say yes. Use cache, yes, once again. Are you writing the script through SSH or similar? And I'll say no, because I'm not. Then it'll eventually start downloading a bunch of different programs, which it'll then install, which is effectively extracting into this one folder here. It's not actually gonna create more programs on your computer that you'll see in uninstalled programs, for example. Don't worry if you see installing anywhere, but you'll see it running through a whole bunch of different files, downloading things, preparing things, and this window here should close and open a couple of times before compilation is completed. When you eventually see timestamps in this, which we enabled, you know that it's building and it's actually working. There's a whole bunch of different errors here for some reason, I'm not too sure why, but this happened last time and it built perfectly fine anyways. So, make a first run, first update and it's downloading a whole bunch of different compiling software, etc. And from here, but it's really just leaving it to run through to completion. I don't even need to show you the rest of this process. Instead, I'll just show you a video of earlier of my build from last night, which ran from late in the evening until early in the morning. And then once again, when it hit the error, I had to go ahead and remove the media info option, which I did show you a little bit earlier, and run the file once again, where it then continued from where it left off, of course, a couple of codecs had received updates in that amount of time, meaning that those were updated if they needed to be updated. The rest was just left as build, and it didn't have to build a second time, which is awesome. It can continue from where it left off. So for now, I'll be closing out of this now that you've seen what the final compilation looks like, and we'll have a look at my actual build, which is located on H drive A over here. This one is completed. So when your project eventually does finish building, the window will close and you'll have absolutely no idea that it's done. What you need to do is navigate into local 64 and you'll see a bunch of different files here. Bin audio, bin global and bin video all contain different parts of FFmpeg. Bin up here includes a couple of other things so I don't think these are required to import to wherever you're gonna use FFmpeg. Anyways, inside of bin video, you'll see we have ffmpeg.exe here, ffplay and ffprobe. These are all 130 megabytes compared to the full build over here that I downloaded from Guyan at 109 megabytes, meaning there's a whole bunch more content here, not even beginning on what the rest of these exes here are. So if I currently open a CMD in this window here and I enter ffmpeg, codex, I'll get a huge long list of codecs returned and scrolling up to the top, you'll see everything this project was built with. If I go ahead and copy all of this text out and place it into say notepad plus plus, I'm then able to scroll through it and search for things that I want. So I originally wanted FDK AAC. I'll hit control F, FDK and hit enter. As you can see over here, FDK AAC. Awesome. If I were to run the same command with the one that I downloaded off of the internet, as you saw earlier, copy everything here, you'll see FDK, no results, which means that we've successfully built it with more codecs than the one that we were able to download off of the internet, which is awesome. That's exactly what I had hoped for. At this point, we're able to go ahead and copy these files out of this folder and start using them elsewhere immediately. For now, I'll only be taking FFmpeg, FFplay, and FF. Probe. I'll then head back to my test file, paste in the new FFmpeg files here, move my test file into this folder, 
and let's try converting it once again. And once again, we'll be copying and pasting directly off of ffmpeg.org. I'll just need to change the file names here. So it's test.wave and I'll run it. This time you can see things actually work and eventually it'll complete, it'll sound great. And of course, using a better AAC codec, it'll sound better than the other AAC codec built into ffmpeg to begin with. Done, awesome. Now, of course, you don't really need these other EXEs here unless you'd like to use them elsewhere or use them directly without the need of FFmpeg. But you'll see that a lot of these have different options. Inside of the bin audio over here, I have the FDK AAC. And if we head across to FDK AAC on GitHub, this project here, you'll see that it has a bunch of switches and toggles over here, which is somewhat similar to FFmpeg, though kind of different at the same time, such as this one here doesn't take hyphen i for input, you just feed it an input file without hyphen i, and you can set an output file name here if you'd like. Otherwise, only giving it an input file name will just convert it to, to FDK AAC anyways, such as the examples down here. But regardless, that's sort of out of the scope of this video. You now have built FFmpeg for yourself, with a whole bunch of different codecs that you can use elsewhere. And of course, if you build any extra software, such as say MPV here, you can use it as you would hope to. I, of course, have built a bunch of stuff I'll never really touch, but hey, I was able to build FFmpeg by myself. In the future, if you'd ever like to update this, all you have to do is run Media Auto Build once again, making sure that you've left everything in Local64 here, MSYS64, etc. Just leave this folder as is so you can update it in the future. If you'd like, you can enter Local64 video and copy the path up here, hit start, type in path, edit system environments and variables, edit environment variables, and we can add this folder to our path. I'll select path, then click edit, and we can simply paste it in here. Whenever I run FFmpeg from anywhere on my computer, it'll check this folder as well as these other folders here for FFmpeg, and then immediately start working, which is great. That's exactly what I've done by placing a whole bunch of different files in C path programs, and there you can see FFmpeg 130 megs. This is the one that I built. Awesome. So anyways, that's about it for this medium length video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.